In this video, we'll explore backdrops, different types of backdrops, and their settings. As we go through the process, I'll cover backgrounds, photos, panoramic 360 backdrops, HDRI images, and using a generated sky. Let's begin in a sample plan by looking at the backdrop panel. This 3D view is using the full overview camera and there's currently no backdrop. Let's go in and look at the Edit Active View tool and specifically on the backdrop panel. If we had a backdrop, it would be listed here. We'll talk about the generated sky. The first thing I want to talk about is the background color. Notice in the background it is currently white. One option that is not very distracting that can add a little bit of appeal is to change that color. You may find a slight blue color will add just a little bit to simulate having a sky and it is nice because when you rotate the camera view there is no image that will go along with it so it's a very lightweight way of setting a color to your background in your 3D views. Let's go back into the Edit Active view and I'm now going to select a backdrop. You can either do this through the dialog or through the library. Let's begin and do this directly through the dialog. Well, this is going to open up the library browser focused on backdrops and as I walk through the folders that contain backdrops in the core catalog there is a folder for backdrops you'll see that in the core the bonus catalog these are backdrops you would need to download to see these again these are different backdrops there's HDRI backdrops and then your user catalog that you can download backdrops as well and these are images that you would take from a job site and then you can use this as your backdrop. So I'm just going to go at the highest level and find a backdrop that can be used and as I kind of scroll down you see the different ones in here and I'm just going to grab one of the backdrops that is from the Coeur d'Alene area. So you see the image, this is one that's coming out of my user folder. So you see the preview, you see it come in and then when we close the dialog, you can visualize the backdrop. Now when you move your camera around, let me zoom out a little bit. So positioning this is important. If I zoom way out, it's going to look a bit odd. So you need to kind of make sure your camera is positioned in a way that makes the backdrop look more realistic. So be careful and sensitive to how this looks. When I move inside and we take a 3D view, it's not as critical. But these overview cameras, it is important to position your camera so that it looks the best for the type of backdrop you're using. The next style of backdrop is the panoramic or 360. Back underneath the edit active view and select backdrop. I'm going to come over and I'm going to use the search term for panoramic. Select one of these panoramic images. This is one that's going to come out of my user folder. You can see others that are included with the software. And then notice that the panoramic doesn't look great because I need to adjust the eye level. You'll find that setting back underneath the Edit Active View so I can pull the eye level down and make it look more realistic. Underneath of that Edit Active View, I'm going to come down to the category for the spherical panoramic backdrop. And there's a few settings in here. I would encourage you to look at these through the help file. It will explain these in detail. One of those that I want to make the adjustment is at the eye level. So as I kind of slide this around until it gets to a point where it looks somewhat more realistic. Now when I rotate the camera, the backdrop will go with it. Again, it's important to position your camera so that the backdrop looks as realistic as it can be based on the backdrop style you're using. Now, two of the backdrops I've used so far have come out of my user library. Briefly, I'm going to show you the process of importing a new backdrop. In my user catalog, I've created a new folder for a particular project. It could be at a high level, and I've created one for backdrops. When I right-click on that folder, choose the option New and Backdrop. You can then browse to the location, find the backdrop, and then you can import that in to your library. And it's a very easy process to do once you get that onto your computer. Now the next style of backdrop that I want to look at 
is a type that's called HDRI. I've done a search up here. You can see in my folder it's called the Backdrops number 2 HDRI. This is in our bonus catalog. You would need to download this. The HDRI images are called High Dynamic Range and they are spherical and can contribute environmental light effects to your 3D scenes as well as materials. And since the HDR images are able to accurately store the differences in brightness between objects over the LDR images, it can greatly enhance indirect lighting for render scenes. So let's take a look at using one of these and I'll just select the top one here. Typically these are going to look a little bit better in the physically based rendering. So I'm going to apply this by clicking on the image. Now this is different than we've done through the dialog. All I need to do is click on the image, move over into the scene, and then click to apply the backdrop. And typically I find that the easiest way to change the backdrop in a scene. So this is an HDRI backdrop. Let's close the library browser. And these are spherical, so as you rotate around, you're going to see the image rotate with the camera. So this works well for walkthroughs. Again, important to position your camera so it looks as realistic as possible. Now I'd mentioned these can contribute light to your scene, and they can also look much differently in different render techniques. I currently have the standard render technique, and this can look much differently and contribute light when it's in the physically based. In the edit active view, I'm going to go into the camera setting, and I'm going to switch this over from the standard camera to the physically based camera. And then let's close this dialog and let this refresh. To contribute light only from the backdrop itself, currently you're seeing some sun shadows and the light here is being contributed from the sun. You can change that setting underneath the edit active view. You'll need to go into the camera setting down here underneath the define option. And there is a setting underneath the global illumination category. Use only backdrop for lighting. This is going to be a different effect. Again, slightly different, an option that you can use. So let's go ahead and close the dialog here. And we'll let this refresh. Now you'll notice that the sun has been taken off the edge. Again, just a different approach for HDR backdrops. You may find this works well for an interior scene, but that's the setting that you can use. Final backdrop setting I want to look at is using a generated sky. Back underneath the edit active view, I'm going to come down to the backdrop panel and I'm going to use the option to use a generated sky. This will work in the standard and ray trace views and you can go through and make some changes to this. Again, you'll see star density, moon luminance, moon intensity, moon tilt, moon direction, and a few other settings in here. The help function is nice because it will define each one of these settings. So I'm going to go ahead and select that for the backdrop. I'm going to go back into the camera and I'm going to check the setting that we marked for use backdrop for lighting. I'm going to turn that back off. Sometimes when you're making changes to your backdrops, you will need to make adjustments to your camera settings to make sure that they look best in the render view that you're in. So now that I've selected the generated sky, let's go in and I want to also point you to the sunlight information. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sunlight. You can see that I'm using a generic sun. The intensity can be selected from a drop down. You can also type in a specific intensity. You can also use sun angles if you've created those. For the purpose of this session, I'm going to turn off the sun follows the camera, which just means as you rotate around, the shadow would rotate with you. I'm going to turn that option off because I want to show you how to move the sun when we get to that point. So let's go ahead and close this and say OK. The generated sky gives us a nice deep blue sky color during the day. Now when I use the tool to adjust the sun, I'm going to come over and select the sun tool off to the left hand side of my screen here. And I'm going to kind of just pull the sun around. You can see how the sun moves, right? So you can adjust this. I'm actually going to hold the control key down and click on a Mac its command key. And now when I pull this down, I can actually simulate twilight time. And we just kind of pull that down a little bit further so we start to get the darkness. And if I pull it down a little bit further so you can see all of the stars and then let's adjust the moon. I'm going to hold the control key down, click to place the moon here. 
and then let's go ahead and pull the sun back up just a little bit for the twilight setting we'll let that refresh so now the generated sky will give you different views this can be nice for evening views as I kind of switch over and show you an evening view from the inside of the house you can get some pretty spectacular views and use this approach to focus on the lighting of your scene as opposed to having the Sun saturate all of your lighting so there's lots of different options you can use with your backdrops you can use a background color you can use a single image you've taken from the job site panoramic image HDRI images and then using the generated sky have fun creating your backdrops and remember to refer to the built-in help file and our other videos thanks for watching